you like it cooked in the Sahara? Like that? Cool again? Yeah. Yeah. It's this. It's this. Yeah, there we go. It's better? Yeah. So what's up? My name is Rashad Hassani. I'm uh, from New York City. I live in Washington, D.C. with a crew called The Assassins, Wars of Life, Urban Artistry, Inc. I started dancing culturally, um, part of my heritage since I was really little, a young boy um, in New York. I remember some of the, the first popping that I saw, but under the name of Electric Boogie, um, was going down to uh, Union Square, 14th Street, and you would see the hitters. I remember seeing this, this guy glide or do a side slide from one end of the street to the other, and it blew my mind as a kid. So this is like my, my first like doorway, you know, to this whole world. I remember my first VHS tape that I bought was uh, B-Boy Pro-Am, I think maybe 99 or 2000, but it had, uh, it had Domino, from Boston, Shallow from Boston, and uh, Clown from uh, New York. And these cats with the waves and the way that they set up the moves and combos, their whole presentation just like blew my mind. And I used to try to study this tape and bite everything that I could, uh, which I was also unsuccessful at. I was pretty whack at it. I moved from New York in 2003 and um, by this time, I had a little bit more in me. I still knew how to do all these other dances that I was doing prior to popping. And um, that's where I started to learn about the uh, Electric Boogaloo um, Foundation or Traditions and Movement through a crew called the Boogie Nights. It was at the, the DC Baltimore Pop Shop where I was going and, and, and learning some of these steps. Later to be introduced to uh, my mentor in 05 or 2005, his name is Junius Lee Brickhouse. Um, we call him House for short. It's easier that way. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so he's he's the gentleman that kind of like opened up the world, you know, um, and, and to, to show me that there's an international community of dancers and people who are participating in this long legacy of movement and music. So so what does it mean to be funky for me? I remember seeing my dad drive his Pontiac Grand Prix. Um, it, was a, it was a Grand Am, one of the two. It was like a, maybe an 87 or 86, I don't know, but it was black two-door. He had a sticker on it said, easy does it, you know. And he would pull up playing like, you know, backstroke, or he would play Atomic Dog, or he would play, you know, any of these like, really strong, heavy funk song. Um, and, and typically his, his persona was to be as cool as possible. The hat was tilted, you know, if my mom was next to him, he would do a little dance and like, and, and, and watching that as a kid, I realized that it's not a step, it's not necessarily a sound as much as it's an essence. This thing of like catching the spirit, this thing of like letting go, to zone out, you know, we use all these different words and I think they're all connected. So when we're talking about popping, actually I'm going to take it away from that word for a second. When we're talking about the origin, boogalooing first, boogalooing meant to be free, boogalooing meant to, to let yourself go. And there were some codes and steps and rules. But within that, it was to break it and push it to the limit. And I think that's the attitude that funk is, you know? Again, this idea that when you pull up and you tighten up on your backstroke, this, this, this thing to, to not be straight, to be crooked, and that's okay, you know? This is funk, you know? This is, 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 is moving and thinking from, this, from inside out. Working for the good side. 